Welcome to Clear the Clutter. My name is Margaret, and this podcast is where I give you practical and spiritual advice to get your time back so you can finally spend it how you really want. Hello, hello. Welcome to today's podcast episode. So I was thinking about what I was going to record and I was getting all stuck in my head and um, my favorite person currently in the world, um, and I love following her teachings, Amanda Francis, she always says um, her secret to posting things and creating content is always about talking about what is on her heart. No agenda, no need for anything other than that. What is on her heart that she needs to tell her people? So. I was thinking about this while I went to boxing today. I was thinking about this after I came home and went on a two mile run today. I was thinking about this while I was taking a shower, making dinner, and I just kept getting all stuck in my head of, well, this would be cool, but maybe it's not good enough. Or, you know, they really wanna hear this. No one wants to hear that. And I just kept tripping over myself and just kind of talking myself out of what I wanted to tell you guys. So I was like, you know what? Nope, that's not gonna work not going to do that. I'm going to record exactly what is on my heart and know that it will speak to you guys because it is coming from my heart. So today, since we're talking about the hearts, what we're going to be uh, talking about and learning is how to manifest your desires while you're afraid. So I don't know if you guys caught my last podcast episode, depending on if you've listened to previous episodes, then this will kind of make sense. If this is the first episode you're listening to, um, it'll definitely click, but I would encourage you in between releases of previous episodes to go back. Um, I think right now I have like 20 or 30, um, active podcasts. I don't know, something like that. It doesn't matter. Um, that part's irrelevant, but a lot of my content is designed to build upon it. So I have a couple of my favorite episodes. I think they're in the either teens or twenties. Um, and I talk about how to manifest, how to up level, how to get around your energetic minimums and maximums and all of that I would consider foundational content. So even though today's episode will definitely help you, if you haven't listened to the archives, it's really worth your time. Um, it just adds a better bang to your buck if you want to think of it that way. So why do I want to talk about manifesting your desires while you're afraid? Well, to be honest, because everyone freaking does it, but no one freaking admits it. So <laughs> currently right now, the hubs and I are working on upgrading an existing building on our property. And this has been a <laughs> uh, cup, God, maybe about a year long process. Um, when we moved into this property, it was a great property. It fit our needs. The house was great. So all that was check, check, check. Right. And it had a building on it. So technically we're like, okay, cool. It's got a building on it. Um, that meets another one of our needs just because my husband's got so many tools and you know, we have a plasma business and all that jazz. Right. So it met the needs to put everything in there. Um, we got everything pressure rossed and cleaned and good to go. And then rainy season hit in Florida. And apparently, of course, we were going to have the rainiest of rainiest seasons. We had like a 200% increase in the amount of rain that we were supposed to have. So it was just constantly wet and muggy and raining all the freaking time. Well, because of that, we ended up finding out that that building held a shit ton of moisture. So the obscene amount of money my husband has spent over the last decade on his tools started to run into issues because they started to rust and we're like oh my god we're freaking out we ended up uh, upgrading the electrical so that we could put two exhaust fans into the building we tried that and that helped but it didn't help completely and we started running into all these issues we're like okay you know what it's basically come to the point where he needs more square footage anyway so there's that issue to contend with. And we're running into this moisture issue. So this shit's cray, right? So we're like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's build a bigger building. And so we went to, we were trying to find builders in town. And most of the builders in town, um, I'll be honest, a lot of the builders in town suck because they have no competition. And if they do have competition, the competition that they're competing against sucks. So turnaround time and getting back to people, total garbage. Um, 
ability to just answer basic questions, you kind of got the runaround. So that dragged on and that took forever. Finally, we were able to set up a meeting with another builder and we sit down and we go over a design of what we're looking for, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, okay, give us a little bit of time. Um, you know, week or two and we'll get back to you with a quote. So they get back to us with a quote. And if you, any of you are giving out quotes, I don't care if you're in sales, I don't care what you do. If you are giving out a quote, for love of freaking God, before you give it out to a customer, make sure you can explain what the fuck the quote says. So I'm sorry, I'm not like, I'm not mad at you. I love you because you're listening to me and you're trying to grow. But as a consumer on the consumer end, I can't fucking stand it when someone tries to give me a quote and can't explain it to me. Or, you know, here's the thing, depending on where you are and you know, in regards to the being the person giving out quotes, right? So say you're just like the schleppel. <laughs> you know, and you're just the person giving out the quote, but you don't really get to make the decisions or maybe you don't understand it. I would challenge you so that you could go back to whoever created the quote so they can explain it to you so that you can explain it when you're physically handing the quote. And that's what we ran into. So this builder, we had the meeting, we showed her what we were looking for, blah, blah, blah. And they come back with this quote and it's like almost a hundred thousand dollars. And we're like, holy shit. Okay not okay, but okay. Uh, it's a number. It's a big number. Can you reverse engineer the number for us? And she really couldn't do it over email. It just didn't make sense. So we're like, okay, let's just do a meeting in person. Um, we went on a Monday, we had a meeting with her. She couldn't explain her fucking numbers. And so 40% of it, or no, maybe about 50% of it went towards a building. We're like, okay, logically that makes sense. We're looking for X amount of square feet, X amount of pitch height. We need rolly doors, blah, blah, blah we can wrap our brains around that the rest of it they couldn't explain so we're like you know what screw it we're gonna try and find a builder on our own and see if we can have the building created to our specifications um because on top of it um in the county we live in you're only allowed to go i don't know it's like up to a hundred percent of your house or square footage so basically the size of your house dictates the size of the building you're allowed to have on your property so whether you want one or whether you want 15 all of that's dictated based on the size of your house and you only have so so much square footage so when we found that out we're like okay we're gonna have to tear down the old building we're gonna have to put up a new one and We've been running around trying to get answers, trying to get quotes and all of that. And so I totally went off on a tangent, but the intention and the point of it is all of this started when we realized that the building we currently have on the property as of today, this moment in time when I'm recording the podcast, blah, blah, blah. So we realized that the, that, that moment that the building we currently have would not work for us. And just because I like to say like, oh, my mindset's grown, my money mentality's grown, I give damn near 100% credit to Amanda Francis. If you don't know her, um, she's in my resources list on my page. Um, there's a couple of courses that she does that I recommend very highly. Like I love her work to death. I bought her book, well, I bought her ebook and her physical book. I've done her courses for years um, because what she does is she takes your money mindset and she breaks out all of the bullshit like she likes to call them lies from the devil so is it ultimately true that you can't make more than this is it ultimately true that you can't do this this and this so the last five or six years because i have taken her courses and invested in her my 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 money mindset has drastically like drastically changed and a lot of it we used to use when we had our motorcycle business so I, in that sense I was taking all the courses and I was getting my money mindset um, and I'll give you a tangible example so when we were at the dealership and I had a customer that had their bikes in service um, and I'm gonna make it up and maybe you know about this maybe you know so they had a motorcycle and they needed a carb rebuild so basically they had a carbureted engine and it was all gummed up because it's been sitting for god knows who long and we need to go through break everything apart and clean it and rebuild it and put it back together so that the bike can run that normally is a hundred you know it's an hour per carburetor so whatever your labor rate is right so it's four hours equals blah um and before amanda francis what i would do is i would I wouldn't necessarily try and talk a customer out of spending money with me, but I made it very, I don't know. I just made it fucking weird. Like, I don't even know what I was doing. I just made it really weird because I had a problem asking for money. Um, 
And it was crazy because the whole point of running a business is to ask for money so that you can perform services. So to not ask for money is fucking insane. Or if I had to quote something, I would try and under quote a little bit. And then to meet that quote, I would have to eat into our margin. So it was all fucked up because, again, I was afraid for asking for money. Um, started taking some of Amanda Francis courses and I realized that it's not up to me to make financial decisions for my customers. It's up to them. I need to present the information. I need to give them the full story. If there's options, I need to give them option A and option B and let them make the decision because it's not up to me. I don't, you know, it, it has nothing to do with me if they put it on a credit card, if they finance it, if they pay cash, if they, I don't know, pay with drug money. Like it, <laughs> it literally none of it matters. All it matters is I'm doing my due diligence and I give the best amount of information possible to the customer so they can make an educated decision. So because of that, my, my, my money mindset has grown drastically over the years. But even still, I'll run into blocks of what you could, some people call it new upper levels of success. Um, I call it my energetic maximums. So. Um, if you haven't listened to it, there is a specific episode that talks about energetic minimums and energetic maximums. Um, and sometimes it just comes back to like, I'm running into my energetic maximum. I'm like, oh, this is new. We thought, Ben and I thought that having a building on the property would be enough. And then when we realized between rain and mold, not mold. Yeah, no, we had mold on the roof for a little bit where we had to pressure wash that out between rain, mold and rust. Oh, this building is not working for us. Just having any building is not enough. So if I didn't have the money mindset that I have now, we would have said, well, screw it. We'll figure it out how in how to figure out how to make this building work. While his probably $100,000 worth of tools we've paid for over the years rots. Or we would have tried like 15 janky different things to make it all be okay because in the past we wouldn't have been okay with, all right, well, what is it that we actually do need? We need a building that is X amount of square feet and is insulated and set up on the property properly so that it's not gonna let moisture in so that his tools don't rot. Because there's another thing, um, we used to have plasma a plasma table back in the, way back in the past. Um, And it is basically, it's, um, if you don't know what a plasma table is, it's a torch, that people use to weld, think of it this way. So you know how like welders are physically welding pipes together? Well, you take the machine that they're using and you tie it up to a computer and you tie it up to a table so that you can go into the computer, you can load a design, you can hit a print button and you can quote unquote print out that design on metal as long as it's a 2D design. It doesn't do 3D, You, you physically have to do the 3D part, but Say you wanted to print out circles or brackets or this or that, anything that's flat, you could do that with a plasma table. Well, we used to have one in the past. We made a shit ton of money with it and it was a really crappy table and we had a fuss with it every other time we loaded a project in, but it still made us a shit ton of money. So we're like, well, we'd like to put that back on again. There's a lot of designs that he's been coming up with. There's a lot of things that we've been working on. So we're like, okay, we'd like to do that. Well, if we had had our old mindset, we would have been like, well, let's just put it in another building or let's do this or let's create that. Or, and we would have made all of this mishmash to try and get around the fact that the current building we have does not work for us. And when I say that, I don't, I want you to use all of what I'm telling you as an example. When you do come and finally recognize whatever it is that you're going through does not work for you, I don't want you to feel guilt. And it's really, really easy especially in the whole manifesting process. Um, Basically manifesting what I mean by manifesting is getting clear on what you want and figuring out how to get there. So manifesting is the new hot word right now and some people will gravitate more towards that word. Other people, depending on how your brain's kind of wired, think it's a little too fluffy. I kind of ping pong back and forth between the two um, because I like to manifest a desire and then I follow that up with some version of an action. So what does that mean? Um, So that can be, okay, we realized that the building does not work for us. The existing building on the property doesn't work for us. And we're like, okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna start exploring what a new building would look like. What does that mean? What is it that we actually need? So that would be part of the manifesting part. But the other part that, again, most people don't talk about 
is you're doing all of this discovery, figuring out what you need, figuring out what you want, figuring out what's a non-negotiable, figuring out what's important to you. But majority of it is for the people that actually quote unquote manifest their desires. And I'm doing air quotes at the microphone, which you guys can't see, but you know what I mean? So people that manifest their desires, air quotes included, you know, a lot of them do it while they're afraid. And I don't know why no one ever admits it. It's not, I don't know. I don't know why in general people don't admit how afraid they are to do shit. The ones that we all admire. So I admire Amanda Francis. She posts content on the social medias every single day for like the last 10 years. I admire the shit out of it. Do I want to do that? Freak no. Like, fuck no. No, no, no. That does not light me up in any sense. But if I released, let's say, 300 podcast episodes, does that light me up? Yeah, that gets me excited. So when you're looking at someone, we always look at the perfect shininess of them. And we're like, oh my God, they must be so much better at manifesting than me. Um, That's not the case. It's just they've learned, and whatever they're excelling in, they've learned to do that with fear to the point where they've gotten and done it so much that they're no longer afraid. But all of us, every, every single person does something while they're afraid. It just might not be the thing you're realizing. So for me, for example, it could be podcasting while I'm afraid. You guys might be thinking, or gals might be thinking, oh my God, she's so candid on these podcasts and she can just create content and yada, yada, yada. But what you're not realizing is there's a lot of thought that goes behind it. There's a lot of, um talking in my head of like, oh, am I good enough to have a podcast? Why do I have a podcast? You know, who wants to listen to me? All the random ego bullcrap that comes up. But I'm like, you know what? I want it and I'll do it afraid. So ironically, that's what created today's podcast episode is how to specifically manifest the desire that you have, even though you're afraid. So going back to the building analogy slash my life right now, we first recognized that the current building we had was not going to work. We're like, okay, there's no guilt. It is what it is. We've tried everything we can think of and it's just not going to work. So once we got over and past the whole like stage of, oh, there might be some guilt. Once we moved on from that, we started discovering, okay, what is it that we really do need? Do we need a certain amount of square feet? Do we need certain heights? Um, he wants to have, we need certain heights so that we could put a car in the building because he's working on a race car right now. Um, we need a certain amount of square footage so that we can have the plasma table again and we can have all of his other welding and metal production equipment actually spaced properly. So not only is it all in there, but we can actually move between machines so that we're not literally one machines on top of each other. We needed space so that we could have a project area. So when we're working on an active project, we don't have to take everything down and put it back up again. Every single time we're in the building, which would have been a nightmare. So we started looking at what we actually needed. And then again, this is where I go back to doing it while afraid. So when we went to, when we finally went to that first builder that I was telling you guys about earlier in the episode, and they're like, oh, it's going to be basically just shy of a hundred thousand dollars. The first thing that happened to both of us, and I swear if you had recorded our faces, we, it would have been hilarious. Our faces just fell. And we're like, oh my God, we're cool, but we're not that cool that we have a random $100,000 lying around that we can just spend on a building. Because if that was the case, life would be a little bit different. And so when they came up with that, of course we were afraid. Anyone that doesn't admit when you have something that you really, really want, you're working towards, and then this big drastic number comes out of nowhere and you're like, oh my God, how the hell can I afford that? Anyone in their right mind is going to be afraid. But what we ended up doing, what we have been doing is we didn't give up on our dream. So this is where the whole manifesting part 2.0 kicks in, right? Just because it is something unexpected. So that $100,000 number was completely fucking unexpected, especially when the bitch, sorry, when the person couldn't, <laughs> no, fuck it. Especially when the bitch couldn't answer me why. Like she couldn't explain her labor rates well. She couldn't explain, okay, well, we have this many hours set aside for concrete and that's what this budget line is going to be. We have this much set for building permits. We have this much set for a porta potty. We have this much set because you, when you're doing a construction site, 
if it is a builder, they have to have a porta potty on site. They can't use a bathroom, whatever. Um, this much is for putting the building up, yada, 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 right? She couldn't break down the second, basically almost $50,000. Couldn't break any of that down. So instead of just shutting down and saying, well, we tried, fuck it. Um, <laughs> you know, we actually started taking action steps. And I have to give my husband a hundred percent of the credit on this. I initially did shut down a little bit and I'm like, oh my God, this has been so overwhelming. Trying to find a builder has been a god dang nightmare. And now they're telling us that we basically need to spend hundred, just shy of $100,000 on a building. This is just too much. So where I, in that sense, shut down a little bit, my husband ended up finding, um, through just Googling and researching and not giving up, and this is the manifesting part, is the not giving up part, he found a company that we could go ahead and design a building, and they had a really, really great interactive website. So we're going in there, we're designing buildings, and we're like, okay, so what if we did it ourselves? You know, because the building company says that you can do it yourself. You don't have to, outside of the um, a specific scissor lift crane so that you can lift up heavy pieces of, of uh, metal, you don't really need anything else because you're all, everything's pre-drilled and all you have to do is connect everything together. You just take the bolts, take the nuts and zip, zip, and you're good, right? Um, for guys out there that work with their hands, it's two lug -a -dugs. <laughs> Um, Inside mechanic joke. But... You know, we're like, okay, well, we could work with this building. And we ended up, you know, working back and forth. And we have been working back and forth with the company. We were able to get the exact design that we want. Um, I've done where I can. And I've gotten on the phone or I've gone in person to the local building department. And I've asked particular questions of, can we reuse this? Can we do that? What about this? What about that? Um, you know, we've both taken action steps to, quote, unquote, manifesting our desires. And... I'll admit, there is a little bit of fear, a little bit of fear of, okay, well, for us to get the building we want, we might not have enough of a budget. Yes, we can afford the physical building. We can afford the additional concrete. We can afford the electrical, the building permits, but we might have, we might not have enough of a budget left over to pay someone to do it. And so Ben was like, well, if we really want to get this done and we're not really thrilled with everyone else's management skills, why don't I just GC it? So that's general contractor. Basically, why doesn't he oversee the construction and putting upness of everything? I'm like, okay, cool. That would save us some money. So today when we were doing our errands, we went to like, I don't know, six or seven different builders throughout town. Basically, if they did anything with buildings, we went in and, or if we couldn't go in, we called them and said, hey, we're looking to put a building on the property. We're going to have the building delivered. We already know we, who we want to use for concrete. We already know who we want to use for electrical. We're going to pull our own permits. Can you physically give us a quote to erect the building? And a bunch of people either blew us off or gave us weird bullshit answers or whatever the scenario is. But one person said, yeah, that's not a problem. Do me a favor. Since you already have all this information, can you email it to me and I can have someone call you back with like numbers? And we're like, fantastic. So throughout this entire process of manifesting a new building, because technically it's still not even up and done. So it doesn't count until it's physically done and we're making the payments, right? But throughout this entire process of manifesting our dream building on the property because we already have the dream property we have damn near the dream house like we just need the dream building so while we're doing all of this there has been points that ben and i have been quote unquote afraid afraid of well how much is this building going to cost can we afford it are we getting in over our heads are we, you know, my, my, I don't know, the word for the last year has just been bougie for some reason. That's just the, my, my go-to word. Are we being too bougie and we want just too nice of a thing? And do we have to learn how to settle? And all of it comes back to you can get creative and you, and, and I don't, I don't know if you need the permission. So if you do need the permission here, I am giving you permission, but you can manifest a desire and sometimes it's going to look messy and sometimes it's, the majority of the time it's not going to look how you expected it, but that's okay. I'm giving you permission to manifest something while you're afraid, manifest something while it's messy, manifest something 
as long as you get to your end goal of what you wanted and not have to worry about like, oh my God, you know, I don't know every step of the way because I will tell you, this has been such a learning curve. I didn't know half the questions we needed to ask the building um, department in count in the county. So that was like three or four different trips and phone calls in its own. Um, all joking aside, to make sure that I could even, because my biggest hang up has always been, oh, well, if we have to put the building up ourselves, is that something we can do? Like, I know we're hard workers and yada, 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 but like, how the fuck are we going to do this? So to be honest, I ended up going on that company's website and I watched YouTube videos of people putting up the buildings. And yes, most of them, I mean, like these are way bigger buildings than what we're doing, but it's the same concept. And I'm like, okay, so that's what a scissor lift looks like. That's what people do with the scissor lift. Oh, they're doing a two-story building. So they're wanting a crane. Well, cool. We don't need a two-story building. So we don't have to have a crane. That takes one thing off of our plates. Actually, huh? You can tell in the video that it's over almost a month long period, because again, they're putting a you know, industrial warehouse up basically. So a lot of the things where I was afraid of, am I good enough to put up a building? Am I going to get someone hurt because I don't know what I'm doing? Am I physically strong enough? Am I smart enough? Instead of just wallowing in that fear, the manifesting desire of wanting that building. And I can, it's crazy. I have this Evernote post that, or Evernote note that I wrote God, probably like five or six years ago. And sometimes it'll just hit me and I'll just have to sit down and I'll have to write it out. And it feels like I'm watching a scene from a movie. I have like vivid dreams that are just so crazy, crazy vivid. It feels like I'm watching a movie. So I have it in the past where we're on this all ton of acreage and we're in our house and I get up and we go to the building and blah, 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 blah. And so like, I can tell you from the desire in my heart, the manifesting side, I am so excited and ready to have this building. I'm so ready to just kind of move on and actually stop talking about the building. I'm so excited to make sure my husband's tools don't rot. I'm so excited to have the plasma table again where we can have a tool that lets us create things and put them back on Etsy and open up the Etsy store again because it was a great fun way to make money. I'm so excited for all of this that it's worth going through the fear of the I don't knows. I don't know how to pull a, put up a building. I don't know how to ask the right questions at the county. I don't know how to do X, Y, and Z. And, you know, in this scenario, I've been very lucky because um, I don't, like to pers I don't like to give off the um, uh, perception that I do everything myself and I'm this magical wonder woman. I'm not. I am part of a very long lasting healthy marriage. I've been with my husband since we were 16 years old. We got married at 19 and 20. I was 19. He was 20. Um, we just what was it last year? We just celebrated 12 years together married. So I am part of a very good healthy team. So a lot of this, you know, where I will have some fear on things, I can lean on Ben. And some of you will have that. And some of you will have it through a partner. And sometimes it'll be through a coach. You know, there's been things where like, okay, so my money story that I was telling you guys earlier in the beginning of the podcast, Ben had just as equally a shitty money mindset as I did. We both sucked. And it's not trying to like shame him or anything like that. We both just sucked. We both came from families that handled money, ironically, drastically different way. One set of parents overspent obscenely. Another set of parents underspent so crazily that, you know, it was a running joke that, you know, 10 years later, he could still burp up a hamburger helper meal. So, you know, we came from two drastically different money mindsets and neither of them were healthy. So where I would have needed the support, I got the support in a form of a coach, aka Amanda Francis's courses. I paid for her courses. Over time, I started out with a $300 course and I paid that over her installment payment plan because that's all I could afford at the time. And it took everything in me and I was terrified. But I got the support I needed because I knew that I wanted more in my life and I did it while I was afraid, but I got it through a coach. So in the scenario of the building, I have my husband that I can rely on. But if that's not your reality or maybe that just isn't a good fit, maybe your partner, spouse, whatever, polygamous group, unit, whatever it is, you know, the person, maybe no one in your group you can rely on because maybe you're all stuck at the same level. This is where I would encourage you to find some outside source to use for support. So you can find 
a blogger or whatever, you know, I talked in the last episode about um, needing to go keto a little bit and how it felt overwhelming. So, you know, my version of support, I just got it in the mail today, was a, what was it, all out of keto uh, grocery pad checklist. And it's literally everything you can think of that is keto or keto friendly on a grocery pad. And all I have to do is check a box. So where I was afraid, using that example again, I man, I need to manifest doing keto in a long-term healthy way. Not necessarily going crazy keto every single day, but because I am a uh, pre-diabetic and I don't handle carbs or sugars very well, I need to moderate what I eat. I need to be mindful of all of that. So because it felt so overwhelming, I have bought cookbooks and I've said, okay, I'm going to try one new recipe a week. And if it bombs, I'll put a note in there. And if it's great, we can make it again. And now we have a resource. I've gotten the keto, you know, grocery shopping checklist. Um, what other little things have we done? Um, I came up with a really cool breakfast idea. So all of these little things I've just, I have the desire, I'm manifesting the desire, but the reason why I'm giving you all these examples and analogies and little glimmers of insight into my life is I've done, and I'm currently doing all of this while I'm afraid and that's okay. I can't tell you enough. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. So many people are, a ashamed or afraid to admit that they're afraid and I think the reason why because I've done it in the past the reason why no one wants to admit they're afraid is because for a lot of people fear can lock you up and I'm telling you that it doesn't have to be that way you can be afraid and you can still move forward and sometimes it's just a little stuff so maybe that is your version of buying a grocery pad checklist um, to make grocery shopping easier because you're tired of spending money willy-nilly and you don't know, whatever. I don't know. I don't even know of an example. But so me for going keto and trying to manage my sugars and not be a bad pre-diabetic and all these, have all these health issues going forward in my life, a little teeny tiny thing that I could do so it didn't feel so overwhelming was buy the grocery pad checklist. It cost me seven fucking dollars. I got it from Amazon. It's a like 60 page tear pad and it is literally the shit, right? So one little $7 thing supported me so that I can do something while I was afraid. Buying a $10 cookbook here and there after looking through and, and seeing, okay, these recipes do feel realistic. That's something that supported me that was teeny tiny even though I'm afraid, even though I feel like I'm not good enough, even though that I don't feel like I'm the best cook in the world, or even, 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 it doesn't matter. None of this stuff matters. What matters is you have to be open and willing to see things differently. You have to be willing to go, okay, I'm super wanting this. I can see it. I can smell it. I can damn near taste it. I want it so bad. I have no fucking clue how I'm going to get there. What little thing can I do so that I can put myself in the right direction? And, you know, this is where some people will call that taking inspired actions. Um, it can be called taking inspired actions. It can be taking baby steps. I don't care what verbiage you use, but know that everyone and their brother who ever does anything will do it while they're afraid. And if you're not afraid, you're damn near a psychopath. <laughs> or to that point, you've done it so many times that it's not new anymore, you know? So maybe 15 years now from down, you know, from now down the road, we're on our sixth home or whatever the fuck we are, right? And building a building is no big deal because we would have done it. We would have gone through it. We would have been like, oh, we'll never do that again. Or, oh, that made life a lot simpler. We'll do that again next time. So we'll have lived experience. So therefore going forward, it's easy. So it's so ironically easy for us to judge someone's social media presence or, it, and that's probably partially why I'm so... I know that there's a lot more people and specifically a lot more women out there that would get my help if I could get out of my own way into my blatant just not liking 
slash borderline disgust for social media. I always tell people the reason why I'm not on social media and it's really hard to get around it is I have no desire for outside validation. I don't need anyone to see what I'm eating because I don't give a fuck if anyone knows what I'm eating. I'm happy with what I'm eating and that's all that matters. If I want to share a recipe, I'm going to share a recipe with a friend that they would find it valuable. I don't need to post it online for outside validation and likes. You know, I don't care. I, I really, you know, I've talked about this over and over again. I'm a pretty private person, even though I run a podcast. So I don't need everyone to know every single thing I do. So it's hard for me to disassociate the constant posturing and validation desperation that people have when they're on social media and realize that I need to just be coming from a place of love and value and that I just want to fucking help people. I want to help more people gain clarity around the clutter in their life and therefore make more money because a lot of this comes back to when you can clear the bullshit and the clutter out of your life you will make more money and the more you clear out the clutter the more you simplify everything that you're doing and I don't mean make it easy and like lackadaisical and forget about it I'm just saying simplify you know not overcomplicate shit you know you don't have to do Like what I was doing with guys in the carburetors when we were doing services back in the motorcycle dealership. I should have just said, hey, your bike needs a full service, a carburetor, and a blah, and a blah, blah, blah. It's going to be between this price and this price. Would you like to do that? Instead of going, oh, well, you know, and meh, 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 you know. So over time, the more you clear out the clutter from your life, that is how you make more money. So let me go into that a little bit because that will help you understand why manifesting your st- desires and your needs while you're afraid makes you more money because all of this comes back to making you a fuck ton more money because I know that if you are a good, kind, caring person, you will take that money and you will do good with it. Whether that means you can now pay full price for someone's services or you can go to a boutique that you never could have shopped at before, which helps out a small business, or maybe you do Kiva microloans like I do. It doesn't matter, right? You're going to do good things with that money because you are a good person. So when you're manifesting something, even when you're freaking afraid and you don't know what the fuck you're doing, you're like, how the hell am I going to get there? When you're going through all of this, you're building up your resilience. You're building up your grit muscle. And as you're growing through that, because you are going to grow through that, you're going to make more money. So I'll give you a very clear example. When our building is up and done, right? We have the old one torn down. We put all his tools back in. We have the new one up. It's gorgeous. It's pretty, blah, blah, blah. I buy two new patio chairs and I put a pot of um, probably roses or... I don't know. I don't know. Some version of a pot of plants in between the two chairs because we're going to have this little patio in it. Yada, yada, yada. Everything is done, right? That necessarily creating that building doesn't make me more money. But what it does in that sense is now I know a lot more about construction. Now I know a lot more about myself and how hard I'm willing to work. Now I know how to put up a building. So let's say something happens and I need to go work in construction. I can be like, yeah, I helped put up a building on my husband's, pro- you know, my husband's, my husband's and mine's property. It's blah, blah, blah square feet. I've used a scissor lift before. I know this and I know this and I know this. So now I have more valuable skills under my belt. But another thing would be once that building is up and it's running and it's good, Now we can take the things that we've had on pause in our life and we can take them off pause. We can buy the upgraded plasma table. We can take those ideas that we've been saving and saving and saving for the last year and a half-ish, whatever, right? And we can go ahead and print them. We can take the designs and we can go back to Etsy, which we had an amazing, amazing business on Etsy. We can take those designs and we can put them on Etsy. We can make really great things for people to buy that they will love because we love them and they'll love them and it'll be amazing, right? All of this amazingness. All of this amazingness also means more money. So where I might have a little bit of a fear or a doubt of, oh, how are we going to pay for this building? Part of it could be, oh, well, any money we make from the Etsy store that can go towards the loan of the building. Because again, Margaret Stevens is not that banging at the moment one day she will be, that I just don't have a random $100,000 lying around to be like, okay, here you go. Here's some cash, you know, boop. (laughs) So it makes you more money because you've grown grit, because you learn more skills, because you are able to 
grow and see things differently. And then because of that, you now have something that you can take and you can turn into income, whether it's your version of a plasma table, whether it's just a new skill set that you have, maybe it's a new relationship that comes out of it. All of this stuff happens because you're doing something while you're afraid. So that's where I go back to manifesting and desires and fear and money. They're all this big circle. So I don't want I don't know. It's really easy to think of manifesting as this linear thing. Um, Kate Northrup, she's another person I used to use as a mentor for years. I've actually met her in person. We've done USANA stuff together. We've gone to convention together. Um, I love her to pieces. She's a great, great woman. Um, she has a book that's fantastic. It's called Do Less. Um, done some of her courses before, yada, 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 right? Totally love Kate. And that's the thing like <laughs> you can do things and you can be afraid and it's okay um i totally lost my train of thought in regards to kate what was i trying to do kate fear oh god anywho it doesn't matter so she's this great person and she has great thoughts great ideas great content but even okay so here's kind of a different analogy it's not what i was going to say in the beginning but it doesn't matter um she used to have a blog that was very different than currently the blog she has right now. So she's even gone in and changed things and done things while she's afraid. And she came up, there we go, that's what I was looking for. She came up with this concept or she expanded and feminized this concept, concept called the upward cycle of success. So her philosophy, or at least a portion of her philosophy, is that we all have a certain amount of struggles of things we're going to deal with in our life. And in reality, instead of looking at it at this linear fashion that you go ahead and you can conquer your struggle and you never struggle with it again, her belief is that you can actually pretend you're on a spiral staircase and you're gonna grow through the struggle and you're gonna hit a new version of it. You're gonna grow through it and you're gonna hit a new version of it. You're gonna grow through it and you're gonna hit a new version. So as you're spiraling up, a a round thing of stairs, it's the same concept in whatever your growth part of your life is going to be. And one of mine is going to, <laughs> I already know what it is. It's balancing out, making a fuck ton of money so I can give a lot of it away and help a lot of fucking people and battling my need for privacy and intimacy and being a massive introvert. Like I was talking to my dad about this today when I spent some time with him. And I was like, yeah, dad, you know, the next property that we got, I want it to be this amount of acres and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay, well, your house and your building will take up this much room. He's like, what are you going to do with the rest of the acres? And I'm like, nothing. He's like, why nothing? I'm like, because I'm a massive, massive introvert. I love people because I can appreciate them. And I think everyone like can teach me something, but at the same time, it's exhausting. It's exhausting to work on the phone six, seven hours a day. It's exhausting to interact with people. It doesn't matter how much I love them. It doesn't matter how much I appreciate them. And, you know, I'm grateful for them. It's fucking exhausting. So I just want space. So my growth throughout my life is going to be learning how to manifest new things of creating more income, creating better income, creating smarter income streams, creating diversified income streams while I'm afraid and also juggling the fact that I'm this huge introvert and in my head you can't be an introvert and make a fuck ton of money which I to totally know it's not true but that's my thing right so how this can help you how all my ramblings and book recommendations and people recommendations and stories about our building and Etsy and all of that can help you is just to validate the fact that when you're manifesting something that in your life, when you're going after something that you want in your life, majority of us, again, unless you're a psychopath, most of us are doing it while we're afraid. And it's okay if it's messy. Honestly, most of the time I expect it to be messy. Um, you should expect it to be messy because messy means you're going out of your comfort zone. So messy means you're trying. Messy means you're putting on you know, your big girl panties or boxers or whatever the fuck you're wearing under your pants, you know, it, it means you're actually going out of your comfort zone. So I don't want you to, you know, people have vision board parties and all that stuff. And I think they're fantastic. But I think the other part of it is people create all of these stories in their head of, oh, I want to manifest this or, oh, I have this Pinterest board dedicated to that. 
But in reality, they feel like that can never be them because they never look at the other half of the equation of, okay, how can I do this while I'm afraid? What does that mean? What does that look like? What baby steps can I take? What inspired actions can I take? What can I do so that I can figure out how to reach my goal and be afraid and know that it's okay? So all of that is me giving you a bajillion amounts of permission to do things while you're afraid and know that it's okay because I do it too. I'm not some special, amazing person. I mean, we all are because we all are, but you know what I mean, right? I, I'm not this person that doesn't have any fear. I have fears. I have desires. I have goals. I have dreams and I am willing to work with them. And I'm also willing to know that like if I set up a specific timeline and it doesn't magically happen in that timeline, I'm not going to give up, you know? So say I'm like, okay, Ben and I are going to have the building done in two months. And the county is like, well, no, you have to do blah, blah. And that's going to take three more weeks. And now it's going to take three months. I'm not going to be like, oh, well, it's going to be three months instead of two months. Let me just give up. No. Again, that's another example of fear stepping in and taking control of what you're desiring. You need to manifest until the outcome is there. You need to manifest until you are doing exactly what it is you pictured. The only time I ever want you to deviate from that is if it no longer is something you desire. So I don't know, I'm going to make it up. Say Ben and I started to do the building and then something changed in our life and we're like, you know what? No, we're going to just sell the property as is and we're going to buy something else to start a whatever. I don't know. I can't even create an example but say we just didn't want to do it anymore right that is the only time that a desire is good enough to be given up on and I don't want to even say given up on I say mo moved on from so in that sense don't give up know that it's okay to do it while you're afraid and if you need resources you always are welcome to reach out to me um, I love emailing back with you or responding in audio back to you guys. You guys are, and gals are freaking amazing and inspire me. And if it's not me, maybe you reach out to a spouse, a friend, a family member. And if none of them are modeling what you want, go out and find someone. So if no one's modeling what you want, reach out to, you know, go look go look at my resources page because I have all my people that inspire me and that have inspired me for years. I have them all listed there. Um, over the next, I don't know, couple of months or whatever, I'm going to be doing quote unquote book reviews, but I don't want to call it like a boring book review, but I want to give you again, more insight into, I'm really good at collapsing time. I'm really good at taking the clutter out of things. And this is how I do it. This is a little behind the scenes peek of how I do it. So Look at the resources that I have, reach out to those people, buy their courses, buy their books, enroll in their programs because if they're modeling what you want, use that as a baby step to get there and know that it's okay to do it while you're afraid. All right, my dears, I'm grateful for your time. I've talked your ear off. Go manifest something, go do it while you're afraid, and I will see you here next week. Bye. Have a burning question for me? Want that link I was talking about? Get access to all the resources and links that were mentioned in this episode and others over at margaretstevens.co. And if you haven't, don't forget to sign up for my VIP list where I share special bonuses, pre-launch coupon codes, and advice I don't share anywhere else. Thanks for listening.